like applied mathematicians okay where do we put them in society where they can have the biggest benefit that's such a good question in some ways i'm like the worst person to ask about that <laughs> but this isn't going to answer your question but instead is going to like fan the flames of why i feel it's an important question i have actually been thinking recently about if it's worth making an out of typical video that specifically addressed it like in, inspiring people to ask that especially students who are graduating because i think this thing happens where when you fall in love with math or some sort of technical field, by default in school, you, you study that. And when you're studying that, effectively, you're going through an apprenticeship to be an expert in that or a researcher in that. You know, the structure of studying physics in a university or math in a university, even though they know that not all majors are going to go into the field, the people that you're gaining mentorship from are academics and are researchers in the field. So it's hard not to effectively be apprenticing in that. Yeah. And I also have noticed that when I go and give talks at universities or things like this and students come up after and they're like saying hi, there's a lot of them like, Grant, you know, the videos were really inspiring. Like you're the reason that I studied math or that you're the reason I'm like going into grad school. And there's this little bell in the back of my mind that's like, cool, cool. I'm amazed. I don't know if I believe I was solely responsible for it, but like cool to have that impact. Do, do I want that? Like, <laughs> is this a good thing to get more people going into math PhDs? On the one hand, I unequivocally want more people to self-identify as liking math. That's yeah. very good. But that those who are doing that necessarily get shuffled into the traditional yeah. outlets like math academia. I think you highlight it very right. It's like math academia, finance, and computer science, data science, yeah. something in there in general um, are very common things to go to. And as a result, they almost certainly have an over-allocation of talent. Mm. All three of those are valuable, right? I'm not saying like those are not valuable things to go into, but... If you were playing God and like shifting around, yeah. where do you want people to go? Again, I'm not answering your question. I'm just asking it in other words because I don't really know. I think you should probably talk to the people who made that shift, of which there aren't a huge number, but like Eric Lander is uh, maybe yeah. one good example. Um, uh, Jim Simons would maybe be another. Whereas people who were doing a very purely academic thing mm -hmm. and then decided to shift to something very different. Now, I, I have sort of had this thought that it's very beneficial to insert some forcing function that gets the pure mathematicians to spend some of their time in a non-pure math setting. You know, uh, NSF grants coming with a, a requirement that 10% of your time goes towards a collaboration with another department or something like that. The thought being, hey, these are really good problem solvers um, in a specific category of problems, and to just distribute that talent elsewhere might be helpful. And when I, when I like run this by mathematicians, sometimes there's a mixed response where they're like, ah, I don't know if we'd be all that useful. <laughs> like there's a sense that the aesthetic of what constitutes a good math problem is by its nature rooted in the purity of it, such that it's maybe a little elitist to assume that just because people are really, really good at solving that kind of problem, that somehow their abilities are more generalizable than other people's abilities you know why ask about the applied mathematicians rather than saying like shouldn't the applied biologists go and work in logistics and things like that because they also have a set of problem solving abilities that's maybe generalizable At the back of my mind i think no but the mathematicians are special like, there, <laughs> yeah. there really is something general right. about math um so I don't have the answers. I will say I'm actually very curious to hear from people for what they think the right answers are or from people who made that switch. Let's say they were a math major or, or something adjacent like computer science, physics, and then they de decided that they wanted to pour themselves into something, not because that was the academic itch that scratched that they were scratching by being good at school and, and getting to appreciate that, but because they stepped back and said, what impact do I want to make on the world? Um, I'm hungry for more of those stories because I think it could be very compelling to convey those specifically to my audience who is probably on track to go into just the traditional math type fields and maybe there's room to have a little bit of influence to disperse them more effectively. But I, I don't know. I don't know what more effectively looks like because at the end of the day, I'm like, I'm a math YouTuber, right? I'm not someone who uh, has a career in logistics or manufacturing or all of these things in such a way that I can have an in-tune feel for where is there a uh, need for this specific kind of abstract problem solving? It might be useful to speculate on how an undergrad or somebody who's a young math whiz might even begin to contemplate, here's where I can have an edge. I'm, I'm remembering actually, it just occurred to me, a former podcast guest, Lars Doucette, he was a game designer actually, and he started learning about Georgism, which is this idea that you should tax land and only land 
And so he got really interested in not only writing about those ideas, but also with, well, if you're going to tax land, you got to figure out what the value of land is. Like, how do you figure out the value of land? There's all these algorithms mm -hmm. of how you do this optimally based on neighboring land and how to average across land. And it, it, there's a lot of intricacies there. Um, and so he, he now has a startup where he just contracts with cities to implement these algorithms to help them assess the value of their land, which makes property taxes much more feasible. You know, just a, that's another example, right? Where the motivation was more philosophical, but his specialty as a technical person helped him, um, you know, helped to make a contribution there. I think that's perfect. Probably the true answer is that you're not going to give a universal thing. For any individual, it's going to be based on where their life circumstances connect them into something, either because they you know, he had an interest in Georgism for whatever reason. But if someone, I don't know, their, their dad runs a paper mill and they're like connected to the family business in that way and realize they can like plug themselves in a little bit more efficiently, you're, you're going to have this wide diversity of the ways that people are applying themselves that does not take the form of, general advice given from some podcast somewhere but instead takes the form of simply inviting people to like think critically about the question rather than following the momentum of what being good at school implies about your future 